Diddy facing more allegations. It's pretty much a given. Uh, this time, the lawsuit uh, is uh, coming from someone who was 10 years old at the time, uh, claiming that they were an aspiring rapper. Got a chance to, to meet with Diddy, got a chance to get into to his compound, his world. And then the allegation goes that the rapper, Diddy, drugged him uh, during a music audition. Uh, it goes into great detail, but we'll we'll kind of leave it at that. The civil lawsuit filed this last week uh, by Busby uh, is in addition to all the other civil cases that are going on, uh, awaiting, uh, obviously, civil trials. But as we know, the feds, uh, once these civil ones come out, they've been just kind of like, hey, maybe you want to look into this one, too, which is what eventually led to uh, the current federal charges. This is civil one. Joining me to discuss, Robin Dreek, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program. The numbers keep dropping in terms of the age uh, of these victims. What the hell? Um, you know, when we hear of predators, age is always a real disturbing thing to me, especially when it gets like really. I mean, it's disturbing all around. But when you start to get like, I mean, ten years old, that's that's young. And then you have predators that get younger. I'm, I'm hoping to God it stops here, but I don't know that it will. What, what's your thoughts on this so far? I, I think it'll go as low as parents are bringing their kids to Diddy. Yeah. You know, I don't think, I can't imagine it's going to go lower than this, though, because this is kind of the bottom end, I would think, of, of kids trying to break into this industry. Hopefully. I'm kind of shocked by this age to begin with. Yeah. You know, but when you have that mentality of I'll do anything it takes and you think that you when you're naive and you don't understand the world and industry, you think and you get easily convinced that this is the way it works. Yeah. And you get groomed in really rapidly. And in this case is grooming through drugs. Um, nothing, nothing becomes surprising anymore, but again, even the, the type of, uh, sexual assault just is more, uh, I think it, everything keeps going back to power and control, yeah. it, um, trying to exercise power and control over others. Obviously these are allegations right now. Nothing's been proven in court. It's a civil suit. Uh, let's talk about the parents a little bit. Um, you know, bringing their kids to Diddy. I mean, people do this all the time, not just to Diddy. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of stars out there and there's plenty of, of decent ones too, who truly are looking out for those that are coming after them and, you know, paying it forward, essentially. How can I help you? We're going to give you some insight into this, and, and, you know, in a good way, in a good mentoring way. But then you have ones like this that take advantage of that idea and take advantage of people who are trusting in a very rare situation. I mean, it's not often that you're going to have Diddy coming up to you going, I think your son's in that, the next big star. I mean, that's what most of these parents would dream of having happen to them and their child. So they think, oh, my God, Sean Combs wants to work with my kid. And then Sean Combs requests, hey, drop him off at the studio. We're going to do this or that. And would you drop your 10-year-old off with anybody else that you don't know? Probably not. But this idea, this this idea that, oh, well, they'll be safe. What could possibly go wrong? It's all going to be adults. It's a professional setting for those of those people who've never been into a music industry or to the studio settings, um, uh, they think it's going to be great. I mean, what do we have here for responsibility and parts of, of the parents uh, in terms of blindly just letting their kids go to do whatever they think is, is going to be great and exciting at that moment in time or beneficial? So I, I am always cautious about any kind of victim blaming in here when, yeah. especially when it comes to parents in this case because again i we do these thought experiments we have deep empathy where we just see the context through the parents eyes and, and you hit keywords in there they would feel safe mm -hmm. leaving their child off for this once in a lifetime opportunity yeah and if you are being again when, when you talk about grooming and you talk about cult might mentalities what's most likely going on is there's love bombing there's acceptance bombing. There's welcome to the club bonding that's going on between well, probably not Diddy personally, but the staff that yeah. surrounds him, the group think that says, hey, this is calm. It's what we do. Hey, welcome board. Big smiles, high energy, very optimistic place. So you feel embraced. You feel warm. You feel loved. You feel safe. And so you drop off your child. And then what happens next is the assault of however it escalates. And then I, I was when I was reading the 
you know, the the charges that they're saying, it sounded very much like what happens in these situations when you're dealing with children that have been sexually assaulted and, and abused in any way, they use shame against them. You know, human beings were very susceptible to shaming, mm-hmm. hugely, because um, genetically and biologically, it says that we're not going to be a part of the tribe, we're not going to be affiliated, that it's not good for our, our brain health. And so they'll use shame as a lever of influence and control and manipulation to not share with your parents, not share with anything else what happened here. Otherwise you will no longer be special if you share this. So this is a welcome to the special club. We're going to do these things to you. We've done these things to you. And now we're going to hold it above your head that this was your choice. Look what you chose to do. And so they victim blame and shame the child into not disclosing, but in this case, and in many cases, what happens is, is that the parents see a change in the behavior and it makes them probe deeper. And so I do give credit to the parents in most of these cases that they acted on good faith. They acted on feeling safe because the predators made them feel that way. And then they then saw the change in behavior in their children and said, what happened? What's going on? And they probed. So that's what and, I think. And, and the thing is, there's there's so much of this uh, out there. Um you know, you are a parent. You know, I know yours are older than mine now. I'm I'm going through the, the tween into teen years, and you know, you've been there too. Um, and it's a difficult juggling act. Any parent knows that of letting them find their their freedom, letting them kind of create their own voice, and and then encouraging that. I mean, that's what we want to do as parents: follow who you are and what you want to do, while being some good you know guardrails along the way. Um, but, but there are those moments where it's like, yeah, this could be like really, really good for you, but I'm putting some blind faith in the people I don't really know, um, to get me there. Um, are we in a place where that just needs to, to completely change where this blind faith, we just need to stop having because there's too many people who rely on that as being a thing to prey upon children do we just need to have a more open world where it's like, yeah, you can go into this, but I'm going to hang out and watch on the sideline. Um, but even then, many parents went in to do that sort of thing, and they kind of got ushered away, and they somehow got separated. I mean, how – I mean, I, I'm not blaming these parents. I really am not. Um, I, I can't imagine being in their their shoes and the guilt they must feel. But how do you avoid this sort of thing You know, when, when, if your kid does get approached by something that is like their dream? And one of the biggest people from that dream world is right there saying, hey, you can be a part of this. And this can happen in anything. It doesn't have to be superstar celebrity. It can be, you know, I want to be this career. And then somebody from that career reaches out. Let me help you. Let me show you what this is all about. A lot of times, innocent and good. But not always. How do parents combat this sort of thing when you have situations like this? This is a great question. And I'm glad we're going down this road, Tony. To me... Everything comes down to, and this is everything in life, absolutely everything, work, home, play. I don't care where it is, healthy relationships. And what are healthy relationships? Healthy relationships are where there's open, honest communication, transparency, and vulnerability. Vulnerability means that you feel safe sharing things that are going a little sideways because no one is taking your shame and holding it in front of you. And when you, when you have a pattern with your own children of understanding and recognizing what healthy behaviors and relationships look like and what we only accept into our lives, my family, what we did with every situation, with everyone we dealt with, with every teacher, with every college application, with every, you know, my kids moving through college and everything else was always assessing if something felt a little off, we then immediately went to, is this a healthy relationship? Are they being open? Are they being transparent? Are they being completely free with the information and allowing us in their lives because relationships are a balance. They need to be give and take on both sides. They need to be in balance. And if if you're approaching a situation, a group, an organization that your child wants to be involved in, and you as a parent want transparency, want involvement, or at least being able to be there, not as a snowplow in front, not as a helicopter above, but on the sidelines to observe and watch, a healthy group and organization relationship will say, yeah, no problem. You can sit or watch it over there. You can observe over here. If you're not getting that, that's when my red flags go up and say, and see, and then you have the conversation with a child that says, hey, like in my case, you know, my son and daughter, Kevin and Caitlin, I say, you know, Kevin, remember we talked about what he- healthy relationships look like when healthy things? Yes, Dad, I remember. This seems a little off to me. What do you think? 
this again, we have a conversation about this and and say, remember, if this is meant to be and it's good, it's going to be healthy. Because if we're seeing unhealthy things today, it's not like it's going to get better tomorrow. And it's not something you want to be part of because unhealthy things don't lead to, unhe to healthy places. Mm -hmm. and that's how I deal with it. It's a very good way of looking at it. And especially when they can understand what that's all about, they can help get themselves or prevent themselves from going to those situations when they don't have you to ask the question to, when they're out there in the world, they can already have that in their mind of, is this healthy? Is this not? A lot of it, I, I would say probably is going in with the character of the, the human that you've uh, helped to create uh, to, to be able to manage and navigate those situations in a good way, rather than not having those tools. And I, and I think the reality is a lot of kids don't have those tools. A lot of parents, don't have those tools yeah. they're not they're they're operating from the same excitement as the kid and that's okay you know we all i got my goosebumps going on this one because that's what unbreakable alliances is yeah. is all about it's this is about understanding that we are not the all answers to everything you know every time us as a human being as an individual as you tony face something for the very first time because we have a lot of firsts in life the first time we experience bringing our child to a sporting event the first time we have our child going to ninth grade you know these are a lot of firsts for us yeah. but luckily there's other people in our lives that it's not a first for them that's why we have healthy relationships with these people so we can ask questions we can get advice and guidance and they can be our loving critics for us, as we're going through our first, so then we can help someone going through their first. And so mm -hmm. to do so in a vacuum and making guesses, that that can lead to up and down results. I remember, you know, when my my both my kids applying to the colleges they wanted to go to, like my son wanted to go to the Naval Academy, mm -hmm. and they had a set of criteria that they're looking for, and we couldn't meet one necessarily because there was an unhealthy relationship and something that was going on in high school. And so I, we immediately backed out and said, Nope, we're not doing this crazy. Mm -hmm. So the next thing I did was I didn't have an answer for it, even though I went to the Naval Academy. So what did I do? I called the Naval Academy. I called the admissions office. I said, hey, listen, you say you're looking for this criteria. We got an unhealthy relationship here that's going on. So we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. What specifically are you looking for that we and what ideas do you have that we can supplement something over here to matter and it's like oh yeah that's not a big deal we see it all the time we just want to know what he's doing with his time so if you do x y and z it'll fit perfectly i'm like answer is done and yeah. you see we moved away from the unhealthy crazy didn't guess at it i just called the source yeah. with reps and said all right what do i do next yeah makes a lot of sense uh i mean it really it really does there's so much uh you know to go through in this but i think there was a healthy interesting conversation about this case not so much about the you know the celebrity and everything but how can this stuff be applied because i think a lot of parents are looking at these this case going shit like yeah you don't want to be afraid you don't you don't want to be afraid you don't want to be afraid you don't want to have to to go through something like this but it really does uh does make you think <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.